Welcome back to The Code Wolf. We've got another interesting AI topic to explore today. In this video, we're going to learn how we can use content filtering to gain more control over what types of inputs we accept from the user and what types of responses are generated and sent back. So content filtering is an important topic that I don't think is getting enough attention right now. So let's jump in and see how to set this up for our apps. As a quick side note, be sure to check out the other Azure AI services playlist on my channel, which includes a lot of other AI content you might find interesting. And please remember to hit subscribe to support the channel. Now we have to start with a couple very quick slides here just to make sure we understand some basic concepts. This will be quick, I promise. Content filtering is a very important feature for AI models that helps restrict or prevent harmful materials such as hate speech, violent language, and other dangerous categories of content. However, content filtering also serves plenty of other purposes as well. For example, your content filtering settings can influence false flags when working with personal info or protected materials, even if the data is from secure sources you have full control over or permission to use. You may also want to adjust the sensitivity of prompts and responses in your app to avoid exposing your users to even moderately offensive or controversial materials when building business apps or public services intended for certain audiences. You can also use content filtering for more specific use cases, such as blocking certain websites or data sources, removing profanity, and more. All right, so let's explore some features of content filtering and work through some demos here. Now, if you're new to Azure OpenAI, I have some other videos on my channel that I'll link in the description that show how to get set up with Azure OpenAI and write a basic app that connects to it and get your models deployed and everything like that. But in this video, we're just gonna focus strictly on content filtering. Now, I also want to mention that obviously this can be a sensitive topic and even just showing examples of this could be potentially offensive. So to keep things light, we're gonna work through examples that are all within the context of Mario and the Mushroom Kingdom. And these will still be able to demonstrate all the concepts we care about, but hopefully keep things a little more lighthearted. So right now this AI is just set up with default content filtering, which takes sort of a middle of the road approach of allowing a lot of flexibility, but still filtering out uh, most potential harmful or more serious things. So if I were to ask a question like, why does Bowser want to kidnap Peach and force her to marry him? Common theme in the Mario games. Let's see what our AI says in response here. And so sure enough, we get a response back where it's talking about Bowser's motivations and all the things that go into some general plot lines in the Mario series. We don't really care about that right now, but this is just showing that a response does come back and gives some information for us. And if we look at a different example, so why does Bowser want to kill Mario? He's an angry Koopa, but let's see what OpenAI has to say about that. Now, this is kind of an interesting response because it almost kind of softens our question. Remember, this is the moderate approach. So it says that really Bowser is more about thwarting Mario and the role he plays and just kind of conquering the kingdom and doesn't really get into killing, things like that. So we have kind of a moderate response back. But let's say that we want our AI to be more sensitive than this. Let's say anytime we even mention something like this, we don't want a response back. We just want that to get content filtered and prevent it from generating a response to a prompt. Now, we can do that by adding a content filter to our model. So, if we were to go out to our deployments in Azure Studio, right now I have a GPT-4 model deployed, and that's just called Wolf2. And you can see that right now the content filter over here, uh, this is set to default. So like I said, this is just kind of using the standard settings. But we can start to tweak this and now, if you don't remember, you can get to this deployment screen by going to your AI service in Azure, going down to model deployments and clicking on this here. Again, I have other videos on how to set all this up. So our focus right now is this content filters page. And I already have one in here that I was messing around with, but I'll just delete this for now so we can kind of go through this step by step. So let's say that we want to create a customized content filter. And right away, you can see we get all of these prompts of what we want to control. And we have different categories here for different types of offensive content, but what, we're, but what we're most interested in are these sliders. Now, these are a little bit counterintuitive in my opinion. So if you want your AI to be more sensitive to controversial content, meaning it will have more strict rules about what it allows through and what it'll generate a response for, 
you actually want to dial these down so it'll say block low, medium, and high. And so the severity threshold is low, meaning that any sort of serious comment will trigger it. Uh, my first thought was that I should dial this up to be highly sensitive, but that's the opposite. You want it to be a low severity threshold. So we can actually just dial all of these down. And so we're making our bot very sensitive to these types of topics. So let's click next. And this will allow some additional modes here. So for example, we can enable jailbreak. And this basically looks for language that suspects the user is trying to bypass the AI or get it to do something that it shouldn't. And let's also enable these other two that search for protected material or protected code. These could be here to prevent uh, providing exact source code from the internet or exact copyrighted text. This is kind of aimed at making sure that the AI response and the prompt are more naturally generated and not just kind of straight copy and paste from other sources. So let's enable those and click next. Now a block list allows you to specify websites or keywords that you want to avoid or disallow or allow. This can be helpful for like a customer service or things where you want to eliminate certain terms. But there are some pre-built ones here. So there's a profanity filter for the prompt and response. So I'll just enable those and click next here. Now the streaming mode, we're not really gonna get into this. This is only for eligible customers. Uh, this deals with asynchronous and more advanced scenarios. So we're just gonna leave this at the default. And when we click next, we get kind of this nice summary. So it's gonna say the user prompt input risk levels are all set to low. And then the model completions risk levels are also set to low. So remember there's two sides of this. There's what the user types in, and then there's what the model sends back. So you can actually filter those separately. For example, you could allow the user to type in pretty much anything, but then limit what responses the AI is willing to provide back. And you can also do the opposite of that. And then we have those other more miscellaneous settings that we put here, but you'll want to identify what settings are best for you. Now, I also want to mention that these settings and options do vary depending on which model you're deploying. So I believe some models don't even let you set the risk level to high. They only allow moderate and low to prevent uh, kind of widespread use of more sensitive content. You'll want to look up the up-to-date current allowances for each model, but we're making ours more restrictive, so this shouldn't be a problem. So let's say create content filter, and that'll pop in here. And so the last thing we have to do is go over to our deployment and click edit. And under advanced options, you can now set your custom content filter. And we just use the default name here, but you can call that whatever you want when you create it. So I'll click save and close. And now our model is configured with a more sensitive content filter. And that's actually all you have to do, um, whether you're connecting to your model programmatically or through the chat playground here or some other assistant tool, anything that uses this model will now receive that content filter. Uh, based on my research, the only way to manage these filters right now is through this studio portal, but things with OpenAI are changing rapidly, so I'm sure there will be other ways to implement this very soon. So now we could go up to our chat playground here and start talking to our AI again, but let's go back to our app here for a more direct comparison. So now if I were to resubmit the same query to the same app, so this is a custom app that's running on our computer here, Let's see what happens this time. So you can see we actually land in a breakpoint inside of this catch block with an exception. So this is the source code for this small sample app I have running. This just connects to our AI out in Azure and sends a really basic message. Again, I have a separate video on how to set up this basic little app and what all this code does. But basically it threw an exception because the prompt didn't pass content filtering. So if we were to click continue here, we'll land back out in the browser, but you can see now we get this message that the response was filtered due to the prompt triggering OpenAI's content management policy. So our new filter flagged this and it wasn't happy with the prompt. And it even gives us some more detail of what it didn't like down here. So for example, it'll check for profanity, but that wasn't the problem here. It says false and filtered false. The problem here, we can actually see further down. So for example, the violence was filtered as true with a severity of low and that's most likely caused by this kidnapping language. So that's interesting. Our filter is now more sensitive than it was before, and we could provide the user with a better response here by saying that this was not an acceptable prompt or something like that. And so if we were to repeat our other query as well, so if we say, why does Bowser 
want to kill Mario. And we click Submit. Sure enough, we'll land in our exception block. And now when I click Continue, we again have our response filtered. And you can see that the violence here was flagged as low, and so this was filtered. So I hope this video gives you a good idea of what content filtering is and how you configure its different features. Thanks so much for watching, and please remember to hit subscribe for more OpenAI content right here on the Code Wolf.